Hello to all my friends out there, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. This video is, is a famine coming? Yes, no. Uh, 10 fundamental foods to buy so you don't starve when there's no money. Okay, so I want to get right into uh, the content. So is a famine coming? Yes or no? Yes. We don't know when a famine is coming, but we know eventually a famine is going to hit. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So I bought some nice new stuff and I want to enjoy it, like these candles. And I, I was able to get the candlesticks at Walmart. And then I, I asked the AI for um, some home decor and it had a lantern set around. So I thought, oh, this is pretty. I'll try to find some. So I found this little lantern, brand new. So I'm going to enjoy that. So that was awesome. Okay, so we know a famine is coming. We don't know when, but you never know. And then, uh, so you don't have any money, but hopefully you have food, like what? large bags of potatoes and get the ones that haven't been washed because those are going to last longer but if they start to sprout get into the habit of of sprouting the the sprouts you can just cut out the area that has the sprouts and i grew these and i did i did plant a few i saved these i'm going to be growing them indoors and uh, these sprouted, but then something happened to my plant. So you can, I will be getting like uh, probably 10 pounds, large bags of sweet potatoes, same thing. Our rice, I buy five pounds at a time, but I usually like to have about 10 pounds. Flour, now this one I go heavy on, uh, maybe like uh, 50 pounds. Corn meal, you want corn flour and corn meal. So you can make corn, cornbread, beans, and then you need some kind of, of fat, like pork fat, like lard. But if you save your fat, you're gonna have fat. We'll get into that. Uh, beans and lard, peanuts, large bags. I buy uh, them at Smart and Final. I'll show you when I buy another one. Oatmeal, I bought 10 pounds, but when I find a good deal, I buy oatmeal. Milk, all kinds, I'll show you later, and tea. So let me give you the list. And get the big, imagine, like in the olden days, the old farmers, the old ranchers would go to town and they would load usually some kind of a cart or wagon down with the food that was going to last until they grew the next uh, crops of food or until they uh, took the cattle to market. And cattle don't go to market. Well, you stagger them, but generally it takes a, about two years. Okay, so now, so we're seeing catastrophic, catastrophic storms and we have to be able to survive them. So, um, so historically, and with no money, so historically people wouldn't have any money, so they would have to buy the food they didn't grow, and they would have to uh, grow some food so they could survive. Okay, on the one hand, we had the ranchers, but their ranch did include food growing. And then we had the farmers, and a lot of them, if you hear a baby, the neighbors had a baby. It's a cute baby. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the farmers uh, would um, sell, the, sell the food, but they would also keep a lot of food so they could eat the food. So um, now why is it I say a famine is coming? Okay, let's think about it in history. I should have been paying attention when my dad was a history teacher. Okay, um, famines come when there's wars. Um, famines come when there's drought. 
famines come when the population is massive and the food is not enough. So I have mentioned to you, think about this. You have food for people, food for animals. The animals are food for people. So it's possible there might not be any animal food if there's not enough food for um, people. Like I noticed it with my bird food, uh, millet. I used to buy a big bag for under $4 is now $10. Uh, also pests. Okay, now I wanna mention pests. I was raised a Mormon and these stories, you know, not everybody is a Bible Bible person. So sometimes uh, the stories um, help. You know, people ask me, how do you get, how, what, how do you know? What do you know? Well, a lot of the stories were uh, passed down. So um, in the Bible, it tells of an army of locusts. So a lot of people interpret that to mean a massive army. It's going to be the Chinese and the Russians. And then there's the others of us. It says a massive army of locusts. Okay, my family was raised um, Mormons. When they swarm, there it's nothing but locusts. They're, they're giant swarms. So there's more there's Mormon story, and so there's they their crops were being devoured by locusts, by clouds and clouds of locusts. And they prayed to God because there wasn't any pest control to control those many locusts. And uh, also, you know, a lot of uh, insects come after these floods. So anyway, they prayed to God, you know, we're going to starve. These locusts are consuming all the crops. And seagulls flew in, and they said it was from the Great Salt Lake and devoured the locusts. So that was a miracle. So you might be saying, well, the, the seagulls were um, very hungry. That's true because the locusts were, the locusts where my family was, was somewhere in between, figure, Las Vegas and St. George, Utah. So it was a pretty long flight for the seagulls. But basically, it was a miracle. So then I want to mention something about World War II. And this needs to be remembered. World War II was a, a very bad war, but the war got way bloodier at the end. So when things are about to end, that's when it's the absolute positive worst ever time. Like this can't be endured and the people have to bear up in faith in God. And uh, and then, you know, the, the Germans were defeated. And people forget with the help of the Russians. But the Russians didn't forget because they celebrate that. And, and lots of their population was uh, killed. So uh, when, when we see these wars, you can say to yourself, okay, this is really bad. But before it ends, because the people want to win the war, in some of the cases, you should be saying survive the war, and it, the end is the worst. Okay, so that's all on that. Okay, so historically, people would buy the food and grow the food, and so let's think about what did the slaves eat, and then that's gonna help us on our food storage quest. American slaves, food high in fat and starch. So you don't have any meat, you don't have any dairy, you wanna have fat and you wanna have carb food like uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, flour, cornmeal, beans, peanuts, oatmeal. Okay, but you need fat. Okay, uh, maize or corn for cornbread, rice, peanuts, yams, and beans. So you need cornbread or cornmeal or tortillas with your beans and your rice to make it a complete protein. And then the peanuts, peanuts are one of those things you can grow in a bucket. And I am gonna be trying to do that because then you can make peanut butter, you can make a peanut sauce, you can make sandwiches, Okay, now that's the slaves. So that's, so that's a pretty 
small thing. Okay, now Egyptians. Rice stuffed vegetables, lentils and rice, whole wheat bread. Okay, wheat is in the Bible. It says one day's wage would be for, um, for a loaf of bread. Well, if the inflation keeps up, the the cost of everything buys very little when the inflate when it's uh, a very bad inflation beans barley cereal vegetables and fruit like figs and boiled meat okay now europeans wheat grains like oatmeal like bread pork beef chicken so a lot of times they had chickens with eggs Carrots, onions, potatoes, and before uh, potatoes, they uh, ate turnips. So I'm going to be trying to grow potatoes and turnips. Apples, which can be preserved. Peaches, which can be preserved. And cherries. Cherries are expensive, but I'm going to try to get them marked down. Okay, now think about uh, this story. One of my customers was, she was a little bit older than me, but not much. And uh, they were polygamous, which was illegal here, and they went to Mexico. And so she went down to Mexico because there was Mormons. There's also um, Amish in Mexico, Chihuahua, Mexico. And something, this is to do with earthquakes. There was an earthquake in Chihuahua, Mexico, Las Vegas, and San Francisco. And you could take a ruler and draw a linear line. So when these earthquakes start cropping up we want to say where did it come from and where was it going okay so uh she got down there there was no work there was no food so her husband came up to america probably back to the mormons up here and she was left down there with a little daughter and there's terrible stories i heard quite a few of them and an old man she said she had never seen him before came up and he gave her a bag of beans a bag of rice and he told her to plant a garden you notice there was no cornmeal that's why you want to make sure you stockpile corn flour and corn meal maybe he didn't have any either so um the mexican garden is generally tomatoes onions squash and peppers then cornmeal and year round and peanuts so peanuts can be grown um, these uh, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes for sure, can be grown year round. Uh, I want to show you my pepper plant. Okay, my pepper plant, here it is. It's just a little guy. <laughs> but it did yield quite a few peppers, and it was going fine, and something chewed all of the leaves off my pepper plant twice. So then I brought it in the house. I go, enough of these. So here it is, but I want to show you my fossils. So you have nice stuff right now, so enjoy. This is, um, this is some kind of shell. Uh, what I do is I buy rock collections and then I sell all the rocks I don't wanna keep. This is a fossil shell. And uh, I have a little, I have two of these, but I don't know where one is. And they look pretty on your house plants. And then I have two arrowheads. So uh, these are pretty decent. This one's a pretty decent arrowhead. So think about co cowboys and Indians. And then here is an arrowhead. So we think about them more like this one. And some of the arrowheads, I don't know where these came from, but um, some of these, my uh, customer and her husband used to es excavate for them. So I put that on my house plant because he survived terrible hardship. And he's probably gonna yield me some more peppers. Okay, so that's the Mexican garden. But now I wanna to talk to you about the German garden, which is like, I thought this is our side. Okay, a milk, cheese, meat, and then think about pickles and sour kraut. So if you have meat that you have canned, you're gonna have meat fat. So, okay, let me uh, open my pickles that I spent my precious life canning. So I wanna show you something. Uh, pickles are pretty easy to can. See my uh, pepper on top that I grew? 
Okay, so we have the pickles. Now, the German, the, the, from a long time ago was milk, cheese, meat, pickles, or sauerkraut. So I wanna show you a little meal. I wanna show you guys, I wanna pretend a long time ago, long, 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 long time ago. Okay, so the first thing always is bake the bread and make sure you have what uh, be sure you have butter so uh what you can do it can be margarine what you can do i bought this uh this is the uh walmart bread i just felt like eating this i felt like making some italian sandwiches so i'll have uh, a piece of bread now if all you had was bread a lot of times I mentioned to you back in the day, I mean, people have evolved. I would go to my customers' houses and we would eat uh, bread and butter. Usually their homemade bread, the good stuff, the little old ladies. I was friends with my uh, clients. Uh, and some of them for uh, decades. Uh, usually the only time uh, they left me is when they died. <laughs> I had two clients that live uh, next door to each other and uh, both of them died. That was really bad. I had those customers. Some of the recipes I give you guys is from uh, Peggy Usher. Her son was one of the original Beach Boys. So uh, bread and butter and then my side ha always had jam. And so you have a carb, and then if there was any leftover meat, then uh, the next day, now this is where my grandfather came in after working, and uh, he would eat the leftover meat. That was the food, you guys. Preserves are nice. Uh, I, I kind of like preserves better uh, than... Um, jelly but it's all personal preference okay uh let me show you so there's been an evolution in the canning after this occurred to me so i want to have preserves here's my strawberry preserves it's very easy i bought the strawberries marked down a big box for a dollar then i have my so we have bread and butter and this is my leftover ham and this is my leftover hamburger. Yesterday I was doing the carnivore. How that model can eat two hamburgers and two eggs. I bought these hamburgers marked down. So, okay, so we have um, cheese. Okay, this is the good stuff. This is mozzarella cheese that I bought. Um, I bought it in a... Um, a package of, of pepperonis. I go, this is the best cheese. I'm going to buy this every week. So uh, you have you have milk or cheese. I'll, I'll just cut two pieces, but when you start eating this stuff, you're probably going to eat a lot more than that. It's really delicious. And you can make mozzarella cheese easily. Not this good, though. So then we're going to get my homemade pickles. So in my homemade pickles is um, cucumbers and onions. Oops. So I am going to be a lot happier if I uh, store food the old, here we go. So, um, Then I have, here is one of my uh, teacups. This is pretty, pretty. I think this was made in China. Yeah, this was made in China. I love China stuff.
And so um, I have some tea that I brewed, the good stuff. I bought this, this is $10 tea I got on sale for $5. So it was uh, 10 cents um, a bag. And I made um, four cups with three tea bags because this stuff is pretty strong. And then uh, I have um, started uh, stockpiling coffee creamer. Here it is, a Dollar Tree. But I have a whole bunch of different kinds. We'll get into that in a minute. So I will be fine eating this. So um, you save all your meat that you buy it on sale. And uh, you get the good cheese marked down. You. I'll, I'll, let me try my pickles. Maybe they're no good. <laughs> Here's a homemade pickle. That was delicious. So, um, it's not just about misery making. It's about trying to survive, but trying to live in a way that is going to make your survival um, that's just the way you live so you're not going to be suffering all right so now um, that is the German uh, milk cheese meat pickles and sauerkraut so after this occurred to me not counting the pickles, not counting a couple of briskets. I stock, I, what you can do is I bought three um, cucumbers and just can a few cans here and there. Here's my chicken. I have plans for this. I bought uh, chicken thighs, one half price. Uh, I made myself, I have uh, two uh, these these jars are one pound of brisket each. I have plans for these. I will tell you in a minute. And then uh, this is chicken wings and applesauce. And you can can a half a, a half a can. But look it up. I don't know if that's for everything. And then here's keeping the jars so nothing happens to. So what I want to do is I only want to really can up the meat in my freezer so nothing goes wrong. Now I want to give you, so my grandmother would make the bread. Here is the bread recipe. It took me a long time to find this. This will give you a really good uh, loaf of bread. And if you make uh, cottage cheese, I wanted to show you guys my cottage cheese because it didn't set very quick. I heated two cups of, here it is, the homemade cottage cheese. So if you have, I heated two cups of uh, shelf stable milk, and then I had bought lemons, four lemons for a dollar. And then I made the applesauce because I bought uh, five potatoes, but I will be buying 10 pounds as soon as I eat those. So here's my uh, homemade uh, cottage cheese. So you would have a little dairy. If you have milk, you're gonna have cottage cheese. If you have milk, you're gonna have mozzarella cheese. That is good. And then this is the way you can see the sediment in the bottom. I could strain this and I probably will and get the rest of the cheese out. Let me see if I can do it just to show you. I need my screen now. I can't find it. Well, maybe I can use this thing again. Uh-oh. Uh, my new AI phone is here. Thank you, God. This phone has been really good. Uh, if you guys want to buy the AL iPhone and you have a decent iPhone, there is a good. Okay, so uh, when it's set 
overnight, there was quite a bit of more cottage cheese in there. And then I will just dump this in the bowl. And then that leaves the buttermilk. So the point of that is you could make use this way you could and you should, and I will make uh, my bread with this buttermilk. Or I could just drink it. Uh, if you can find lemons, you know, grab them. So, okay, all you need is one and one quarter cup water. So if you're using whey, uh, just add enough water. Heat the water to a warm bath. Like if you test the water on your, like for a baby bottle and you test the milk on your wrist and it's not too hot, then add two tablespoons sugar and stir that around. What I do is I uh, I heat my microwave, I heat my water or my mic or my in the microwave or little pan, and then I add the sugar and I stir that around and then I uh, let it cool to like a warm bath and I uh, then put the the yeast in it and then I let that activate quite a while. I want a good activation on my um, my I buy any kind of I buy any kind of yeast. Okay, then my yeast is activated. I add, um, then when the yeast is activated, I have two tablespoons butter, but you can use shortening. And I melt that, but not hot, because I'm going to add it to the butter. Then I have, um, three and one quarter cup flour, and I have three quarter teaspoon salt. So I add the dry ingredients, I make a well, then I, I mix the, the butter and the yeast together, and I pour that in, and I just start stirring around to combine the, the flour mixture. Make sure you mix the, the salt in it, around and I create and then I start folding it over to create a soft dough. Then I just turn it out on a um, um, a breadboard and I knead that and I make a loaf and I let it rise one time. So this is a good reason this is a good recipe if you just make a half of it it'll make a decent size um, loaf and then you can make another one the next day. Uh, the French bread smaller. Now I want to give you my, um, my, this is a really good recipe. And it took me a long time to find the recipe. And I make this in the same exact way. Add all the dry ingredients and then add the, and then on this one, sometimes it's nice to add, uh, um, raisins because it's not a really sweet bread and they show on the picture oh, bread and peanut butter so you can make peanut butter with any kind of nuts this t this week i made half um sunflower seeds and half uh peanuts because i had a big bag of sunflower seeds I use uh, sunflower seeds, and now I want to give you this good cornbread recipe. If you need buttermilk, you can just use your whey. So once you once you figure out how to make your cottage cheese, your cheese, and your buttermilk, and I will be making some sauerkraut. Because for me, this uh, German uh, German uh, food, the milk, the cheese, the meat, the pickles, and the sauerkraut is the best for me. Okay, so now, um, and then peanuts. Okay, now I want to tell you about an old story about an old Adventist uh, preacher. Okay, he, he's a famous guy. 
And I was fortunate because I have the tape of this. I've sung you guys the songs a million times and I have a terrible, um, terrible voice. And it was, um, come and go with me to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me to my father's house. There is joy, joy, joy. And he sings in the video, but I want to tell you the story because some of you might be in the position of suffering terrible lack. Okay, the Adventists tell you to buy a farm, and you guys have heard my farm stories. I was working in Buckman Springs on this pursuit. I go, you can't buy a farm in San Diego? Well, it's possible. So anyway, he went to this banker and he said, I would like to buy this farm because the Adventist God tells him to buy a farm. I'm still might do it. And the um, the banker said, you can't afford this farm. And, and the Adventist preacher said, God has told me to buy this farm. And the banker looks at him and says, if I give you the money, you're just going to be back here and you're going to have to give me the farm back. And the Adventist said, the Adventist preacher said, no, God has told me to buy this farm. So the, the banker said, okay, I'm going to give you the money to buy the farm. So he went home and he told the family, I have bought the farm. And the family said, oh my gosh, this is the sin of presumption. You don't have enough money to buy this farm. This is a good one, and I will tell you why in a minute. And the farmer said, God has told me to buy a farm, and God has told me to buy this farm. And the, the family's going, oh, my gosh. So he had the farm for a while, and the day came when he couldn't pay for his farm. And he, he was praying, and he said, God, I know you told me to buy this farm. I don't know what to do. And so he decided... Okay, I'm, I know I'm supposed to have this farm. I'm gonna get in my car and I am gonna, gr I am gonna drive and I am going to find a way to keep this farm. <laughs> so he got in his car and he drove to the bank, straight to the bank and he, and he said, God, no, no. He told me that I was gonna be right back here and he was gonna take my farm back. And so he sat there and it was like, he had, a, these people have faith, you know, like my relatives, we're going to get into that in a minute. And uh, he went, he, he was, he was, it was not good. He could dangle his feet off a dime, but he was, he was humble and he knew when God told him to do something to do it. So he went into the bank and, and he, the banker was there and he said, you were right. I can't pay for my farm. Uh, is there anything you could do to help me? And uh, the bank, and it was a few minutes. And the banker said, "Okay, I'm going to help you." And so he was able to keep his farm. And nobody else had a farm. It's very hard to get one. I might get one just to prove I can get one. So that that was a story. Then. Fast forward, I was always getting fired from my jobs. As soon as I, I would go into these shops with no clientele, and as soon as I put a decent clientele in, and I would know this, but I needed a job, and I would go home and I would tell myself, I don't believe this. And so I would remember that story and I would tell my son, I will find a job tomorrow. And I would get in my car and I would drive to every shop in San Diego if I had to. Some of these shops were horrific and I would find a job and I would come home and my son would go, did you find a job? And I go, yeah. And he goes, I knew you would. <laughs> you don't know what I went through, but I would always find a job and I would always pay the bills. So if you need a job, don't forget that story. And, and these are like faith building stories. And um, 
there's another song. Let's see if I can remember it. I'll torture you with my singing. Um, I still have joy. I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I want to tell you something else. There's something and it says, he who sings prays twice. Uh, that's how um, a lot of my uh, relatives made it across the plains. They would sing, which seems incredible. We'll get on to them in a minute. Okay, now I want to talk to you about uh, faith. Okay, so I went to the, I took my friend to the Adventist food bank. That in itself was awful. And we're, we're, it takes a while to go. And I was sitting there with her and she was going, she was acting like a lunatic to be, to tell you the truth. She was going around to everyone who's there and probably is in no better shape to her saying, hi, I'm so-and-so. It's very nice to meet you. And I'm going, oh my God. And I'm sitting next to this well-to-do looking um, Asian people. And I go, um, is this your first time here? And they go, yeah. My son told me not to go, but I feel like we should to help contribute. And I go, yeah, that's what the smart people do. So, okay, uh, well, right before they were going to, they were trying to help us all to be saved. Uh, the churches have to do nonprofit, but not that they have to, they want to too, but there is a lot of Mideasterns there. And so this Mideastern preacher um got up and he said brothers and sisters don't ever forget the faith of hagar and i'm thinking my god this is an adventist and who needed to hear this but me and so after that you know i thought about hagar in the middle of the desert with her little child with no water and i, I thought many times oh, it's awful you know Fast forward to the Gaza, and this is what I saw. I saw a grandma, and now the Gaza at longest is 25 miles long. So I imagine walking, and babies get heavy, walking from here to um, San Diego City proper. I could make it, but it's hot there. And they're carrying these babies and it was just like a misery, you know, and they were hysterical, you know, they, the Israel army was enraged and they were coming and they had to escape for their lives. And I thought, God, my God, that's like the daughters of Hagar. I mean, they had nothing. They had the clothes on their backs and their babies. So um, we want to try to relate to some of this stuff. So I just wanted to mention that. I mean, imagine you take it, you have nothing. You take off in the desert with your baby thinking, oh, what social services? Okay, all right, now I wanted to mention that because it was, these people have been reminded of that down through the generations. And the Bible says they will be, never be defeated okay so i want to talk about a little bit now about uh the german way so you need milk this is like the story of an indian who stole the cow the old grandma grandfather and i'll show you a picture followed the track of the cow came back with the cow but the indian was never seen again that's an old story okay this is a 20 pound bag of Walmart powder milk, non-fat. This, and that's $20. How many pounds is this? This is uh, four pounds. And then this is the good stuff. This is two pounds. This is $14. It has a long shelf life, and you could make uh, yogurt and cheese out of this. 
This is the evaporated milk. I use that in yogurt making. One of these cans, one can of water in a yogurt. And then this is the shelf stable milk. So I usually buy 10 of these in a month and 10 of these in a month. Then I just added to my stockpile the coffee creamer. So I just keep my eye out and this is a large one, but if you were to run out of milk, you can mix about a tablespoon of this with warm water and that will give you enough milk for your um, oatmeal. Or you can just add a tablespoon to your oatmeal. And then this is a bag of dry fruit, any kind. Uh, if you have jam, so now if I wasn't able to, I buy these, there's uh, banana chips, raisins, peanuts, and I eat those on my oatmeal. And then this is just various, um, this is, I use this kind of dried fruit. I think this is mangoes. Uh, these are papayas. I ate all the other. I buy these marked down, but if you chop, you cook rice, you chop up these papayas or mangoes dry, you put them on your rice, and you put coconut milk on. So if you have coconut, and then these are just, these are, there's papayas in there. So those are the ones. And then I also bought, these were really good. Uh, this was a pineapple and dry um, coconut. So if it's dry, it's gonna last you for a while. All right, no. No, let's see here. All right, I want to talk to you, uh, my relatives. Here's the book. You know how uh, these are, the little boy is on this one. Let's see if I can find, okay, when the, the children, see the little boy on the, the, the children uh, would push from behind. It's amazing that they made it. Our provisions began to get low. One day a herd of buffalo ran past and the men of our company shot two of them. Such a feast we, we had when they were dressed. Each family was given a piece of meat to take along. My brother John, this is my, my grandmother's grandmother. My brother John, who pushed from the back of our cart, used to tell how hungry he was all the time and how tired he got pushing. Now, mind you, it was across the plains, but then you came to the Rocky Mountains. He said he felt that if he could just sit down for a few minutes, he would feel so much better. That's where they used to sing, um, put your shoulder to the wheel, push along all the way, then helped. But instead, father would ask if he just couldn't push a little heart, heart harder. Mother was nursing uh, the baby and could not help much, especially when the food ran short and grew weak. And she grew weak. When rations were reduced farther, father gave mother a part of his share of the food, so he was not as strong either. Uh, when we got that chunk of vegetable meat, father put it in the hand cart my brother remembered that it was the fore part of the week, the beginning of the week, and the father's and that father said we would save for Sunday dinner. John said I was so hungry, the meat smelled so good to me while pushing at the hand cart, I could not resist. I had a little pocket knife. These are like parents' horror stories. I cut off a piece of or two each day, although I expected a severe whipping when father found it out i cut off little pieces each day i would chew them so long that they got white and perfectly tasty when father came to get the meat he asked me if i had been cutting some up he probably already knew us parents you know we have like the power i said yes i was so hungry i could not leave it alone instead of giving me a scolding or a whipping father turned away and wiped tears from his eyes. So that is why the Mormons don't screw off, they stockpile food. All right, let me show you. All right, I will show you the yogurt. 
Now this, the dad here was superimposed. I don't think he was in. This is the one, um, one of the original Mormons. And so I wanted to mention about, um, you know, the polygamy wasn't like it is today. What happened is most of the men died on the way over. So it was decided by the bishop and probably the husband. And so I, in my family, it was my great grand, my mother's grandmother, her husband married her sister. So she didn't want to. So she went home and said, I refuse to stay married to him. And then after a while, she was told she had to go back. And, you know, it wasn't always really a good situation uh, as usual. Okay, here is a picture of me I thought I would show you. This is one of the pictures. Uh, um, it was, um, this was one of the first decent shops I started working in. Uh, the guy was Michael, um, and uh, he was a really good hairdresser. That was a nice shop. Okay, now here is, th this one is uh, my um, grandmother's, my grandmother's grandmother was born on the way across, and then it, she was going to marry, I think it was the one that I showed you, but he was killed. So instead, this was, the, personally, I am kind of glad, it, not glad he died, uh, the other grandfather, the other night, I saw, it wasn't like a vision, it was like a person, and I knew it was that grandfather, the one I showed you when he was younger. On my dad's side, we're large, just like him. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if these are children or grandchildren. All right, I have them. And so what they would do is like, you know, when they were really old, they would write like little uh, messages to the family. Polygamy was hard to live, both for the man and the woman. But when we went into it in obedience to the Lord's command and strive to subdue our jealous feelings and live according to the spirit of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some time before his death, John said, I have... I have complied with the celestial law of plural marriage in obedience to the church authorities. And because the command was derived, was inspired, it caused me much heartache and sorrow. Can you imagine we got a big, huge family all of them fighting? And I shed many tears over it. Like, I don't want to marry your sister. <laughs> but I feel that the sacrifices I made have brought great blessings and I am satisfied. Oh, I got to show you something. This is the good one. Okay, I told you about when I died, I was going to ask God. Okay, the, the grandfather, the first one I showed you, if I can find the picture again. All right, here he is. He went on a mission to Switzerland. And he wrote letters to his wives. And I was a kid, and my grandmother had the letters and one horrifying day, she, she discovered someone had stolen the letters. And so everybody was horrified. My God, that's a horrible thing. What year is this? This is uh, 1883. It's not really that long ago. Maybe 150 years. So some nut steals the letter. And so my grandmother said they were a dirty dog. So I said, when I die, I want to know... Who was the dirty dog? One of the first questions I will ask God is, who is the dirty dog that stole the letters? Or if you want to reveal it to me before the fact, that will be fine as well. I mean, that was just a low down thing, so bad. All right, now think about this, bread and butter. So if you have, a lot of times, you know, I eat bread and butter for food. That is my food. I'm not going to be suffering, especially if I have tea. No. If you have bread and butter, and egg, you could have eggs, soup, peanut butter. Okay, if you're going to make really good nut butter that's not peanut butter 
um, cashews is really good. I can get them sometimes big bags for six dollars. Bread and gravy, bread, you tear your bread up, you put sugar and milk, French toast and bread pudding, and then I have two yogurt. So if you have milk, you can make yogurt. Now I want to give you a shot of the list of the I'm just going to show you the shot. I'm going through my uh, food sh storage and I want to give you the list. So go through your food and kind of um, just take a screenshot, kind of group it together. So like if it's an item I buy a case of, do I have a case? Is this an item I buy a six of, do I have a six of them? Is it something that's very, very uh, important to have if you find a good deal? Not to be a pig, I want to mention the soup. Uh, I like the Ralph brand, chicken noodle, vegetable, tomato, and bean with bacon. All right, now I want to, that's not the end of the list. Uh, this is going to be going on. It's so important. Now, what I did is I took out some food that is that needs to be eaten. So, uh, I want to mention, uh, where did I do that? All right, now, before I do this, I want to mention this bakery robbery. There is a... Uh, a crazy uh, robbery of a bake bakery in New York and what the the thieves are doing and they said starving feet starving thieves just because a person has decent clothes doesn't mean they're not starving so um, one of the first times I started working two jobs was in a bakery so what a lot of people don't realize is when your bakery is very busy, and I didn't even, also I used to clean the bakery, oh my gosh. But the people are coming in very rapidly and they're buying like um, apple fritters, um, cookies, and so it's all cash predominantly. And so I would stuff the bills as fast as I could and many times they usually were small bills the the bills would be so full you couldn't hardly shut the um the um the cash register and then when the the baker was there he would retrieve the money but even though they came in it was always jammed full of money so that is why i mean it wouldn't be thousands of dollars but it would be hundreds of dollars and he used to tell us just like what happened in this bakery, if someone robs you, just open the cash register and run into the back room because all they want is a cash. Just let them have the cash. And so I'm getting my iPhone. So I wanted to mention, don't throw away your large pots because if you have a pot this size, you're going to be able to uh, can pies. And if you have uh, cans this, this, uh, size pans this size you're going to be able to um, can jelly jars and just start uh, stockpiling the jars keep your uh, large pots and save your glass jars so you can do things like this so you don't get insects all right so now you want to keep the dust off your food and keep partial packages of food so you're protecting your your food from insects and rodents and the rodents are not a joke they come too uh, at the worst possible times okay so now i just have what i did was i took out this food as i um the stockpile is getting easier to manage because I'm managing it month by month. I have um, a partial package of grits, and I mentioned these because those were on the list. Uh, I've been buying like three and four pound bags. So you make your grits. These are instant grits, and you can put a couple pieces of bacon, 
or a couple eggs on top, you can survive. I bought, oh, messing up my display here. Okay, these are individual packages of oatmeal, and you can use them just like uh, oatmeal. And then these, I bought two of these. You guys saw me cook one down last week. You can make cookies, you can make granola. And then, um, so, okay, so I have my uh, brisket that I can. Here's one. And I have good sauerkraut. So if you want good sauerkraut, go to Aldi's. It's reasonable. I bought this marked down somewhere, but all you do is you, you and this is brisket with onions, and you just pour your sauerkraut over this and bake it, you know, to cook the meat taste into your sauerkraut. You can add some caraway seeds or some salt and pepper, and then make mashed potatoes, homemade bread with jam, and you can survive. And so all I'm really going to be doing really is um, there's is is canning meat. Okay, here is the uh, I took this out, and I will just break this up to make some chocolate chip cookies. And the best place to buy this now is Aldi's for the quality of the chocolate and for the um, price. So that is very important. I know you're going to get your German type food, the good stuff, at all these. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to talk about the the crop failure. Okay. The first two years I grew here, the crops were good, but the last two years have been really, really terrible. So I had greenhouses and I am going to grow those upside, outside. Okay, now with my canned chicken, here it is. And I also canned chicken wings. Those chicken wings were so good. I just poured them over some cooked noodles. Okay, so with the chicken, you can make chicken and noodles, quiche or chicken alfredo with chicken and alfredo. And then with sauerkraut, uh, you can also use that if you stockpiled a lot of um, hot dogs. Okay, hot dogs, what I do is, okay, now think about um, hot dogs. So if you have a hot dog, you have a bun, and you have a big pile of fries with some ketchup and mustard, or if you have hot dogs, and you have mustard with the homemade pickles, or you have hot dogs with chili. If you have um, hot dogs with rice and sugar and milk, that is good. Or hot dogs with mashed potatoes. Okay. Uh, So uh, let's say uh, you go, well, fine for you. I don't have any money and I don't have any food either. And so um, when you want to start your, start your stockpile, if you can find the food half price, then that's like getting two for the same price. Or if you can find the food like this last week, I bought the strawberries, which were over $7 for $1 at... Uh, routes so you get into the habit of doing that i'm having a harder time on the uh, non-food um foods um okay now i want to talk about yesterday's video and then i'm done and what it was is i went to the food pantry and there was no food left could that ever happen yeah that could happen so if you really need the food go early and then what i did this week is I realized when I went to the food pantry that that was all the markdown food from Ralph's. So I ran to Ralph's Saturday morning and I could buy food and I learned the food pantry, uh, what they give you. And then I was able to get that food really, really cheap. I want to mention that. But the main thing I wanted to mention about that is if you really need the food, go early because they can run out. And just imagine another thing if, if um, what happened at the food pantry that I went 